spirit, right? <laughs> For such a time as this, you have come into the kingdom of God. This is your hour. God knew what was going to be going on right now, and he's anointed you with fire and with power. He's given you his spirit. He's given you his word. He's given you his prophetic timing. This is his time for you, the church. Thank you for joining me tonight. Thank you, all you Happy Life women. Thank you, dads, mothers, fathers, grandparents, granddads, grandmas, and all you young, fired-up people. God has a plan for you. You do know the war is after you, right? There is a war on. We may not see it. We may not know it. It's hidden sometimes, but it's getting very, very obvious. It's not a war that looks like Ukraine. It's a different war, but it's nevertheless a war, and it's going on right here. And the war is over young people. It's over family. It's over our freedom. It's over the destiny that Jesus paid to give us. Amen? The Bible says that it was for freedom Christ came. Do not be yoked again with a yoke of slavery, right? Slavery comes in all kinds of forms. It can come in debt. It can come in medicine and situations where you're required and you're demanded and you're mandated. You have to do this and you have to do that. It can come in the form of putting people in bondage and using them and abusing them and taking advantage of them. Throughout history, there's been a tyrant called Satan, and he's come against the kingdom of God and the people of God and the young people of God. When I was a young person in school, it was the 70s. Yeah, I know that's a long time ago, right? And in the 70s, we heard a lot about global warming and climate change. And I was told that by the time I was an adult, I would live in a six foot by six foot by six foot cell. You know, it never occurred to me that was 666 and that that was a devilish lie from hell. Amen? We're not living in a six by six by six cell, but I want to tell you there were people that were manipulating information to try to put fear in us, to try to control us to use us, to make us think that abortion was normal. Because then when they passed abortion, the Supreme Court ruled on Roe v. Wade and made it law. Do you know that most Americans were against it? Just like when same-sex marriage was ruled on, most Americans, including California, was against it. These are satanic operations that have come against our nation, that have uh, come to lie, to steal, kill, and destroy. 63 million plus babies have died. Human beings just like you have died because of lies that Satan set up that the people in America were not for. Do you know there are more that are with us than against us? It's just the media. It's just the lying uh, people that are uh, putting out information in social media and bots and in, in the government and in leg uh, legacy media that are lying to us to make us think we're the minority. You think, well, surely people don't think this is right. You see these women on TV going cuckoo. You guys see that? Oh, my gosh. Those are demons. Only demons would cause someone to take a baby, a doll, and pop its head off in front of the world and say, we have a right to kill our babies seven days after they're born, 28 days after they're born, up till two years. The World Health Organization has come out with all of these uh, guidelines of how abortion should be allowed across the world. And I'm going to talk to you about there are giants in the land. There are giants in the land, but guess what? God's given you a slingshot. Some of them, he's given a sword. Some of them, he's given a mouthpiece. I'm a mouthpiece. You know, when I was a young woman, I wanted to sing. When I got born again, my roommate, I, I was uh, sharing a room with this young lady that uh, we were both on fire for Jesus, and she could sing like a bird. And I said, Jesus, I'm born again. You can give me a voice to sing. I want to sing too, because she was getting attention, right? We all, we all want attention, you know? I was just a baby Christian in my diapers, running around wanting to get attention. You know, some people are 60 and still running around their diapers wanting to get attention. It's okay. God loves us all. Aren't you glad? We've all done some stupid stuff. Has anybody else besides me, I better put this sword down or I might hurt someone and do something stupid. But has anybody done anything stupid besides me? Don't you, aren't you glad God loves you anyway? Amen. Some of you put up two hands. I could put up two hands, but my other one's full. 
God loves us. He loves you. It doesn't matter what you've messed up. I've messed up plenty of things, but you know what? I get back up and I keep moving forward. And God is bigger than my mistakes. He's bigger than your mistakes. It's such a good prophetic word. We need to remember that. So when we're in battle, sometimes you make some mistakes, but you just turn to Jesus and get right back up. And he just pulls you back up and gets you back up on your feet and you can keep moving. But when I was that little girl growing up in the 70s, I made a lot of mistakes too. But you know what? There were some evildoers that lied to me. They lied to me in the school. They lied to me in the media. Celebrities lied to me. Culture, I started to start naming people bands and stuff that I follow, but maybe I get in trouble. I don't know, I, I could get in trouble all the time anyway. I'm not gonna worry about getting into trouble, amen? I'm not gonna worry about too much is at stake for us to be silly and hiding in caves thinking, I don't wanna get in trouble. I don't wanna cross the line. Well, I've crossed the line. Guess what, at this point, I'm just gonna keep charging forward, amen? And I want you to do the same. We need some bold voices. The righteous are as bold as a lion, amen? I got a new little kitty cat, little Persian kitten. It's so cute. And last night we had a terrible thing happen. I didn't even see it, but I opened the front door to just look out at the sunset, and the kitten got out the front door. I didn't see it get past me. This morning, uh, we couldn't find it. We were like, where is it? Well, I wondered why I didn't try to get in the bed with us last night. Anyway, um, so Pastor Gary finds it on the front porch. My husband opens the door, and he says, the little kitten was there, and it was crying. Oh, my goodness, did it love on us all day long, all day long. Every time I'm trying to study, it comes and sits on my notes, and it purrs, and it lays out, and it knows how to get attention. Well, you and I want attention, too, a lot of times. And so we've all done some things that were done to get attention, but the world has helped us along, and Satan has been behind the world's systems. So I want to talk to you about those systems. This is a night on guard. We're going to expose the giants in the land, the liars, the thieves. Don't anybody get scared. I'm going to talk about some names, okay? When I wrote my book, someone heard, a publisher heard my message, Kingdom Difference in January, say, would you do a book about this? And I said, sure, I'd love to. And they say, look at the seven mountains, and would you tell us what's going on and how we can, as, as the body of Christ, how we can answer those mountains? Well, as I got into dealing with those mountains, I was shocked. I knew a lot, but I didn't know what, wow. I mean, these devils, these giants, I'm going to expose them tonight. There are more good things going on than I had any idea was going on. And so it was disturbing and upsetting. I wrote it all. I gave it back to the publisher, and they said, look, Dorinda, well, you can talk about the devil, but let's not talk about who he's using. Let's not talk about the organizations he's using. Let's not talk about anything that would offend any other religious groups or churches or anybody else. And I said, you know what? I don't know. Let me pray. I prayed that night. The next morning, I heard the word lukewarm. I'll spew it out of my mouth. And so I said, you know what? This may not be a fit. This may not be a fit. Maybe something down the road, but I cannot compromise what God has said. I'm going to give you this before I get into trouble. Thank you, sweetheart. I love my husband. He's encouraged me. So you young people, I want to share with you tonight. I want to talk to you about what's going on in the culture. This is my new book, Fight Like Heaven, A Cultural Guide to Living on Guard. I mean, I could, if this exposes so much what's going on, but I could go on and on. I could write a volume on every single area. But young people, you need to hear what's going on. And I need to warn you. I want to warn you because you're the one the fight is over. The enemy wants to steal, kill, and destroy. He wants to mask you and shut you down and shut you up, control you, control your body, control your future. And I want to expose him tonight because if, I, if somebody would have exposed the enemy when I was younger, I wouldn't have made some of the mistakes that I made. Thank God for his grace. Thank God. How many of you older folks my age or, uh, would say, I made some mistakes. Let's raise our hands, right? How many of you would like to help these younger people not fall into traps? How many of you have their back? You're willing to help them. You're willing to support them. You're willing to pray for them. I want to get into real quick a PowerPoint that I have that just shares what's going on. So there's giants in the land. There always have been. But guess what? You have Uh, (laughs) you have been given the power of the kingdom of God. And for every giant in the land, there is a David or a girl, a guy who has a stone. Amen? So God's given you a stone, and he's raised up every one of us. So let's talk about their mountains of influence that control the world around us. For me growing up with climate change and all those things, abortion, women's libs, women's rights, I became a a women's rights activist a women's rights activist. I was a women's liber, they called them back then, right? 
Everybody was burning their bras back then. It was like, you know, if you're really into it, you will burn your bra. I know that's gross. All you young people are gonna be like, what? Yes, the stuff they're doing to you, they did the same stuff in our era. They just use a different agenda, but it was all toward one thing. It was all toward the same lies of the enemy. And they used the women's lib movement to drive abortion. And nobody dares speak against it because it made it sound like you were against women having equality. So they always tie an agenda with something else so they can push it through. And so the men were afraid to say anything about killing babies. And, you know, people were like, oh, if we say anything, then we are a bigot. We're a racist. We're misogynistic and all these other words, right? The devil always comes up with some kind of marketing plan to shame you so you'll shut up so you won't follow through with what God tells you to do. And so he shut up a lot of people. Meanwhile, 63 million babies were killed. So I want to talk to you about what are these mountains? I love to climb mountains. Anybody else love to climb mountains? Like the ocean better? Mountains better. Okay, ocean, mountains. Ocean, <laughs> mountains. Wow, I think the ocean barely won. Okay, I like them both. I like them both. Give me the ocean at certain times. Sometimes I just want to go out to the mountains and I just want to go out there and like go into a quiet place and hike. So Pastor Gary and I were hiking last week and uh, up in Colorado, we came across a sign. The sign said, please do not disturb the privacy of the snakes. <laughs> have you ever, have you ever, please do not disturb the privacy of snakes? They're disturbing your privacy, my privacy. They're hacking us, watching us, surveilling us, but we cannot disturb the privacy of the snakes. I don't know, anyway. So the cultural mountains of influence, government, politics, that's one. Economy, business, that's another. Health, medicine, that's another. Education, media, entertainment, that's another. Religion and family. And they all have their challenges to walk out and work out. And they're not without danger. Much of the church world has shied away from everything but religion. A lot of Christians think you just don't say anything about politics and government. You don't talk about this. You don't say anything's wrong. Well, let me just tell you, if we don't share that something's wrong, if we don't engage the culture, if we don't get in all the spheres of influence, then we're going to have issues because Satan will move into those, right? He'll move in there and he'll take over. And so what's going on in the culture right now? The mountains of influence are converging together. This is what I learned. I saw bits and pieces, but when I started studying all of these seven mountains, I realize, oh my gosh, they're coming together against the Lord. They're converging against the Lord. They're coming against him and they're using people and abusing people for the end of times. And you are needed to influence them. Every person here, young, old, whatever age we are, we are all needed in this battle. There's not one person discounted in this battle. There's not one person that loves Jesus that's not supposed to be about his business and occupying until he comes, right? He didn't say go hide in the cave until I come. He said go occupy. What are we to occupy? We're to occupy all seven of these mountains. We're to go in there. We're going to speak up. Morality is important. People go, you shouldn't talk about politics. Well, let me just say the government and the laws that you live under, they dictate your future. They dictate whether you can share the gospel. I've been in nations that they can't share the gospel openly. I've been in countries that I can't even name right now because I don't want to get the ministers there in trouble where we had to go in and do a financial conference, a family conference, and that was just the opportunity for us to go in and be able to bring the Bible into those teachings but you can't talk about Jesus. You can't share the gospel. Some of those pastors I met and worked with have been in prison for five years for preaching the gospel. That's what happens when Satan invades your government. We cannot allow that to happen, right? We cannot be apathetic. We cannot compromise truth. We cannot stick our head in the sand and wait for Jesus to come back. Faith without works is dead. We are not going to be dead. Amen. We're alive. So let me tell you about one of the organizations that I found out about. One of them is called the World Economic Forum. It was started. Now you young people hang with me, okay? Don't lose this. Don't say, oh, history, I'm out of here. No, you need to know this. You need to know this. When I was your age, I learned about all these things going on in communism, socialism, and it helped me to know I don't want anything to do with communism, socialism, Marxism. But unfortunately, your generation has been raised up, especially if you've been in the public school school system, you've been around Hollywood, you've been in social media, and all of you have been around these places, at least one of them, and many of them, right? 
You've been indoctrinated. We've all been being indoctrinated, brainwashed into believing that socialism is good. They paint it like a pretty picture, like everybody's going to be equal. We're all going to get to share everything and nobody will be without anything. Everybody will love each other. We're going to live in utopia and love is love and huggy hug. That is not true. That is not true. That is not how it ever turns out. It has never turned out that way. Venezuela used to be a prosperous country. It's a horrible place to live now. It steals, kills, and destroys from people when you take from them their choice, their autonomy over their body, over their finances, over their work ethic. When you tell them they can't do this, they can do this, but you're going to provide. The government never provides as well as God. Amen? Amen. Amen. So taking government checks, becoming a victim and all that, I'm not saying there's not a time or a season when you go through something, but I'm telling you that is not the way to live. You're to live in freedom. You're to look to God and let him develop your life for you and show you who to marry, what to do, what to do with your life, what to do with your own two hands and work so you have something to give, so you have something to do. There's a great joy that comes in work. I know. Sometimes we go, oh, I don't want to work. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. When people retire and they don't have any work to do, they die. Work is important. You were made to work, but you work with a, a different kind of work. It's working into the Lord, watching him do exciting things in your life, right? Like Darcy getting the horse, you know, and going and winning number one. That's the kind of thing God wants to do. So anyway, this World Economic Forum has a leader called Klaus Schwab. Okay, think of, I want you to think of a maniacal plot, right? Any of these movies that you see, there's always some maniacal person that wants to take over the world, right? You've seen it in all the movies. You've seen it in all these different things. You know, I, I can think of movies I've seen, but you know, there's always some maniacal person who wants to take over the world. And this is kind of what this person is like, okay? If you could picture a guy that wanted to take over the world, he has that, that accent, and he's got no hair, and he's like, <laughs> mm, let's take over the world, okay? That's this guy, okay? Klaus Schwab, don't forget that name. Anyway. He started the European Management Forum in 1971. It included a 1,000 leading companies in the world. They wanted to demonstrate entrepreneurship in the global interest. Watch the word global. That's an important word. Companies like Amazon, Dell Technologies, Google, BlackRock, GE, Intel, Meta. Yes, I say the names. Microsoft, Johnson & Johnson, Pfizer, PayPal, UBS, and Visa, and a whole lot more, okay? Do any of these companies ring a bell? Agenda 21. Agenda 21 was their agenda they put together to impoverish huge portions of the population. We can sort of see that happening right now, right? Exactly. They want to take baby's formula away from them, right? Bringing down nations like America by restricting our land use, our air, our energy, our industry, and our agriculture. They have these secret meetings every year called Davos. They get together and they plan your life, what they can do to you. Guess what? They've even had meetings that there was going to be a pandemic before we had a pandemic. They even had meetings about vaccinations. And they had meetings about how they would restrict the people who were radical about their faith. I don't know who they might be talking about. Do you? Anyway, they had these meetings in Switzerland where the WEF meets every year to put together maniacal plans. Praise the Lord. <laughs> in the COVID pandemic, the WEF through Schwab said, quote, to achieve a better outcome, the world must act together or jointly and swiftly to revamp all aspects of our societies and economies from education to social contracts and working conditions. Every country, every country from the U.S. to China must participate. Every industry from oil and gas to tech must be transformed. We must build entirely new foundations for our economic and social systems. Schwab is referred to this as the Great Reset, a fourth industrial revolution, a new world order. He said this, you will own nothing and be happy. That's called Marxism, socialism, communism. That's called Satan, right? Satan steals, kills, and destroys. And so the WEF's twisted plan for a great reset, which includes transhumanism, we'll get into that, is articulated through his right-hand man, the World Economic Forum advisor, Yuval Noah Harari, who happens to be married to a man and a secular Jew. Schwab, Mark Zuckerberg, Bill Gates, Harvard, Stanford, New York Times have all revered him and described him as 
a prophet. Let's take a look. Harari speaks at TED Talks and Times Talks and Harvard and Stanford. Let's take a look from his own mouth. This is Harari. Check him out. Science is replacing evolution by natural selection with evolution by intelligent design. Not the intelligent design of some god above the clouds, but our intelligent design and the intelligent design of our clouds, the IBM cloud, the Microsoft cloud, these are the new driving forces of evolution. And if you look at what uh, Klaus Schwab, World Economic Forum, the Young Global Leaders, if you look at his advisor they call the prophet, Dr. Harari. The prophet. Ooh, you look at the things he said, he uses Jesus Christ's name in it. I mean, all this story about Jesus rising from the dead and being the son of God, this is fake news. Wait, that's not true? You don't have any answer in the Bible what to do when humans are no longer useful to the economy. You need completely new ideologies, completely new religions, and they are likely to emerge from Silicon Valley or from Bangalore and not from uh, uh, the Middle East. And they are likely to, pro to give people visions based on technology. Everything that the old religions promised, uh, happiness and justice and even eternal life, but here on earth with the help of technology and not after death with the help of some supernatural being. And I think that fake news have been with us for thousands of years. Um, just think of the Bible. But there's... <laughs> but, but there is... Yeah, and you we know. don't need a savior. We don't need... And that there's uh, all these is issues about, uh, uh, you know, there, we, 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 don't, we don't look to some God in the cloud. We look to the cloud where the technology, we get our answers. We don't need to wait for Jesus Christ to come back to earth in order to overcome death. A couple of geeks in the laboratory can do it. Am I the only one whose blood is boiling at this point? Ah, Pastor Tin says he reminds him of Palpatine, the villain in Star Wars. <laughs> oh, villains have been with us from the very beginning, Satan being the first one, amen? And so you and I, we don't need to be afraid, but we need to know what's going on, right? Who else is on board with them? Let's look at, look at who all's involved with this. The WEF recruited a band of leaders from all fields called the Young Global Leaders, and then they changed their name to Global Leaders for Tomorrow, I guess, as they got older, in uh, 1993. Here's some familiar names. Vladimir Putin from Russia, Bill Gates from Microsoft, Justin Trudeau from Canada, Angela Merkel from Germany, President Emmanuel Macron from France, Governor Gavin Newsom, California, which is the fifth largest economy in the world, Tony Blair from England, Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern from New Zealand. The WEF, Silicon Valley, Hollywood, and the Chinese Communist Party have made it clear this is not a global conspiracy. These are publicly declared plans. This is their plan. This is not Drenda telling you some conspiracy theory. This is the truth of what they have said, okay? Now, let's add to it. They've got leaders in all aspects of life, okay? George Stephanopoulos, a television journalist, and there's a lot of journalists in there. I'm just giving you one. Leonardo DiCaprio, actor, environmental activist. Mark Zuckerberg, Facebook, Instagram, Meta. We're going to talk about Metaverse. Sheryl Sandberg, Facebook COO, Marissa Mayer of Yahoo, Sergey Brin and Larry Page of Google, Peter Thiel of PayPal, Pierre Amadier of uh, eBay, uh, co-founder, Jimmy Wales, Wikipedia, it goes on and on, Eric Schmidt, former Google CEO and chair of the National Security Commission on Artificial Intelligence. Doesn't it make you feel good to know that this guy that's in the World Economic Forum that believes this kind of stuff is actually over the AI um, security? in our nation. Uh, interesting, huh? Jeff Bezos from Amazon, Jack Ma from Alibaba, Alexander Soros, you go on, David Rothschild. These are all people that have been trained up in the Young Global Leaders. Wow. Do, do you recognize that they're all kind of positioned right now? Don't get scared on me, all right? But this is what's going on. Well, wake up. Wake up. This is what's happening. In the last two decades, we have seen their alliance tread into every area of life to dominate the world stage. 
They've stepped into every sphere of life and influence. Citizens and believers sit back in dismay as they take our freedom of speech, they censor us, uh, they take away our personal expression, our freedom of religion, our bodily autonomy, our health decisions, and children's education. Isaiah 9, 14 says, How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weakened the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. But the Bible says you shall be brought down to Sheol, to the lowest depths of the pit. Those who see you will gaze at you and consider you, saying, is this the one who made the earth tremble? Who shook kingdoms, who made the world as a wilderness and destroyed its cities? You know, when I was having this interview with Robin Bullock, uh, I shared these things with him, and the spirit of prophecy came on him. I felt it. I started shaking, trembling myself. It was like, whoa, I want you to see, because it goes right along with this. You will be brought down. That's what God says. You will be brought down. Those of you that exalt yourself above God, that call his children out and harm them and hurt them, who kill babies, who advocate for that, who push drugs on kids, who uh, traffic fentanyl and do all these things, unless you repent, you will be brought down to the lowest pit pits of hell, and you will face judgment. A lot of churches are not talking about heaven and hell anymore, or sin, or that there's a right and a wrong, but there is, and God's Word is the answer, and it declares the truth. Let's take a uh, look at what Robin had to say on the set. It's bold, it's courageous, but I believe it's the Word of the Lord. <laughs> and this is the Word of the Lord. The Word of the Lord came to me saying this, you call yourself the prophet. Open your mouth again and I'll lay you on your face, says the Lord. You will not rise up against me in this time. For my people have called to me through the blood of the Lamb and I will honor every call made. For you open your ignorant mouth again and I will close it, says the Lord. For you will reap a harvest instantly on the spot and I'm going to make a fool out of you in front of everybody. For I will show you who is God and you are not him. For the Lord says this, hear the word of the Lord and obey, for it is your last chance to obey. Mm. Shut your filthy mouth, mm. for I am going to show you. I will mm. shut it for you, says the Lord. Mm. And all of those connected to you mm. will run like scattered roaches and rats from your presence. So you heed this call, says the king. And I have, I have took supernatural steps to get this word to you. And you will hear it. And you dare laugh at me. You dare laugh at my Ooh. prophet sitting on this set Ooh. talking to you. Dare open your mouth and laugh. And it will be the laugh of the worshipers of Baal. For this time has come hmm. and you will be no more, says Ooh. the Lord, the king of glory. Hmm. Hallelujah. <clears throat> so while they can have their dastardly meetings, we can have our meeting, amen? And we can talk about God and his kingdom, dare laugh at the things of God. Throughout history, God's word has stood true, amen? I tell you what, that fired me up. I said to our sweet little Amy in the office, I said, now Amy, do you think this is going too far? And she starts laughing, she's so cute. She goes, Pastor Drenny, you've already gone out there so far. <laughs> Yes, Amy, that's right. When you start charging on the offensive, you don't back up. You do not back up. The enemy tries to push back, but you've got to charge forward, amen? The Bible says that God gives you the grace, right? The grace to stand up, and we need to be bold together. Not afraid, hiding together. We need to be bold together. These people have called out our God. What are we gonna do about it? Remember what Elijah did, right? I know, he stood up against the prophets of Baal and then he went and hid in a cave because he got scared. That's usually what happens, but just get out of the cave and get going again, amen? All right, so this is in the book. This is just the first chapter of the book, okay? So anyway, 
Uh, God wants you to be strong in this hour. Satan's fate and those that follow him are going to be brought to hell. But in addition to the World Economic Forum, there's other global organizations, the United Nations, the World Council of Churches, the WHO, NATO, the WF, we already talked about, the EU, the World Trade Organization, the G20. These are Interpol, ICC, International Criminal Court. All these things are working. Do you ever hear much about any of this? No, we don't, do we? Because we're too busy watching Johnny Depp and Amber and their <laughs> divorce. Fake news wants you looking at all that stuff instead of looking at what the devil's trying to do. While they're distracting you, they're doing all this stuff. Do you realize in two weeks, our president currently, in January, set up an amendment that we would bring up our health concerns under the World Health Organization? Did you know that? Take a look. This is Michelle Bachman. She endorsed my book. But Michelle's going to share with you real quick where we are. None of us knew this. It didn't come out until the end of April. In two weeks from now, they're going to vote. It's impeachable. And as far as I'm concerned, we should be saying to our Congress, impeach this person. This is illegal. This is not right. We should not be under the World Health Organization. Do you know what that does? It means they can mandate you vaccinate. They can mandate you have a vaccine passport. They can mandate abortion. They can mandate all of our lives and our body and their plan of what they want to do. Check, uh, do we have time? I don't know if we have time. Do we have time? All right. Okay. Let's watch it. <clears throat> all right. Let's watch it. Go to Michelle Bachman now, the dean of the School of Government uh, down at uh, Regent University, and someone that does these great uh, webinars. Also, a candidate for president, and she's a former congressman. Uh, congressman Bachman, Dean Bachman, you were the first one to kind of bring this to our attention. You were in the war room last week. Walk us to because people are just getting their hands around it right now. We're going to have Frank Gaffney on, Dr. Naomi Wolf. What exactly is going on in G Geneva at the World Health Organization, and how do we get so far down the road? of it looks like signing something that's gonna expand the sovereignty, the ability of the World Health Organization in Geneva, controlled by the Chinese Communist Party, to affect the sovereignty of the United States of America? That's right, it's hard to believe, Steve, but in less than two weeks time, a vote will take place in Geneva, Switzerland at the World Health Assembly. They're important because they're the governing body of the World Health Organization, WHO. This authority that they would be given would impact 99.4% of all the people in the world. There are 193 nations belonging to the UN. The Biden administration is bringing amendments that would propose that all nations of the earth cede their sovereignty over national health care decisions to the WHO, the World Health Organization. So what this would mean, Steve, is that the WHO would have decision-making authority to intervene into the United States government policy in any nation of the world without our permission. So for instance, the lockdowns where you see 26 million people today locked down in Shanghai, China, they can't leave their apartments or homes. The WHO would have the authority to be able to impose that here in the United States for whatever pretext they want. They don't have to show data, they could do this. What this does, Steve, bottom line, is it creates a platform for global governance, global governance through the WHO. This is what people need to know. It's time sensitive. No one knew about this. The Biden administration gave these proposed, proposed amendments to the World Health Organization on January 18th. No one in America knew this until April 12th, less than a month ago, they put, the Biden administration posted these amendments. But in less than two weeks in Geneva, Geneva, Switzerland, the delegates will vote on this. They've all, the Biden administration has already released a list of countries, 40 of the most powerful countries in the world, including Canada, including the EU, including the UK, including Australia, these countries are going along with the Biden administration's insane push to give sovereignty over the untrustworthy WHO. Again, this creates a platform for global governance. So it's extremely important. The vote is going to take place in less than two weeks. And no one effectively knows about this happening, but people are starting to know. So it's important now that we get to Kevin McCarthy, the leader in the House, 
Mitch McConnell, the leader in the Senate, and demand that they drop everything and have a joint press conference and say nothing is going to happen in the United States government until Joe Biden drops these amendments and we and and agrees that we will not give a U.S. sovereignty away to the U.N. This is the biggest global power grab that we have ever seen in our lifetimes. And if this goes through, nothing else matters because the vote that takes place May 22nd through 28th in Geneva, Switzerland, goes into effect in November, which means it won't matter which party wins the elections in November because global authority will have already transferred to the WHO. That's why this is so important, and it's why we have to get the U.S. Senate involved, the U.S. House involved, so they stop this dead in its tracks right now, or we lose authority here in the United States. This is where we are. Now, don't be upset in the sense that you're afraid. Be mad. The Bible says be angry and sin not. But it's not a sin to call your congressman and tell them what you think and to send them emails and to call and call for the impeachment of someone who would sell out our nation like this. We're in a war with cultural, spiritual, and personal battles, the battlefront. I mean, it's on every area. We're all facing these situations, but we're not facing them alone. Amen? Throughout history, there have been tyrants. Throughout history, there have been people who tried to stop the will of the Lord. But it is up to us and every individual to decide which side we're going to stand on. Are we going to stand with God? Or are we going to go with Gog, Satan? And unless we learn to fight like heaven, we'll never be able to kick hell out. This has been happening because we have not been engaging these areas. These young people deserve better than that. They deserve us to stand up and fight for them. Amen? Throughout history, people have fought for kids. Men have gone to war and battle, and mothers have laid their life down for kids. But our culture says, no, we want to kill our kids. There's something seriously wrong. And we need to understand that Satan has tried to get people to rebel against God throughout history. Adam and Eve in the garden, God said, uh, you know, this, you know, don't eat from this tree. But then the serpent said, did God really say? The Tower of Babel. They said, come let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens and we'll be like God. You know, Daniel was a young man. He was the age of many of you, a little bit older maybe, just a little bit, when he had to face Nebuchadnezzar, Babylon, they were taken off into captivity in their lifetime. Israel was dispersed. They fell into sin. And because they fell into sin, they lost their nation. God tried over and over to get them to repent, and they wouldn't do it. They wouldn't do it. They were killing babies at the altar, worshiping Molech. They were doing all these evil things that we see again and again, play out again and again. It's it's because Satan's behind it. But Daniel was a young man who was able to uh, interpret a dream. He had the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of wisdom in him. And he was able to interpret uh, an evil king of Babylon's dream. And because of that, he was exalted. And in the dream, uh, Nebuchadnezzar dreamt about this statue. And he described the statue, but Daniel knew already before he even described it. But this statue shows the different empires. There's seven empires there that have come and gone. At the time, Babylon was in uh, power, and he told them, you're going to fall. And he told them what was happening next. And so there was another kingdom, the Medo-Persian kingdom, the, the Greeks, the Romans. All of this has happened just like the Bible prophesied. Prophecy always comes to pass. It always comes to pass. It's the word of the Lord, it comes to pass. And so you see these different empires. They were described by certain animals and certain uh, metals. But this is what happened. Today, all of these empires have fallen, have come and gone. And today, the last one that was in Daniel's vision is the feet of iron and clay, which symbolize two world powers coming together. Who knows what those are? It could be EU, Russia, uh, China, United Nations. Whose governments are a mixture of military and big business. Does that not sound like what we just described? Does that not describe what we were just going through? And that's where we are today. But you know what I love? You know, all of these things have happened, and there's a new kingdom that is coming, but it's not the one they think. It's not going to end the way the globalists think, right? It's not going to be what they've planned. 
the faithful who will stand up in this hour are not going to be disappointed. Because guess what that prophecy goes on to say? It says a rock, a stone will come and crush all the other kingdoms to powder. They'll be crushed to powder. The God of heaven will set up a kingdom that shall never be destroyed, nor shall the kingdom be left to another people. It shall break in pieces all these kingdoms and bring them to an end, and it shall stand forever, just as you saw that a stone was cut from a mountain by no human hand. God's word will come to pass. So where are we in this timeline? You're going to have to read the book to find out. What is going on in these other areas? You need to read the book to find out. This is just the first chapter, okay? But the mountain of the Lord will be beautiful and will rise above all mountains. And we're going to go to heaven, not by our work, because we've all messed up, made mistakes. We've all already admitted that, right? But we're going to heaven by the work that Jesus did. But I just want to talk a little bit about, I go into the book about the different kingdoms, the different spheres of influence and how Satan has set up his kingdom in those areas, in medicine and education. But I want to hit a couple of issues tonight that hit you as young people and hit parents and hit all of our grandkids. We've got to know about these things. Transgender, we hear a lot about that, don't we? And we've heard some about transhumanism. Satan's been trying to sow his seed into man's DNA since the very beginning of time. Transhumanism is a worldwide cultural and intellectual endeavor to transform human beings into, by using technology to enhance their intellectual, physical, and psychological capabil capabilities. Now, this may sound cool if you think, oh, I'm going to get to be a bionic woman, a bionic man. It's not like that. You won't like it if you know they're in game. It is basically to reduce you and I to uh, basically serfs, to just serve an elitist group of people, to do what they say. Uh, you know, throughout the years, and I'm not trying to be harsh with anybody that might be on medications, but through the years I've ministered and helped people get delivered and they, you know, they were battling fear and anxiety and all these drugs they'd been put on and they almost become like zombies. They can't even hardly think or talk. They have no emotions, no feelings, because these drugs dumb that all down. Well, this is what their plan is, to make you where you are just simply fulfilling their, their, their desire, their dream, and serving them. When human beings began to increase in number on the earth and the daughters were born to them, the sons of God saw that the daughters of humans were beautiful and they married any of them they chose. The Lord said, my spirit will not contend with humans forever for they are mortal. Their days will be 120 years. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days and also afterward. When the sons of God went to the daughters of humans and had children by them, they were the heroes of old, of renown. Okay, Nephilim in the Hebrew means fallen ones. So the fallen ones that were supernatural beings actually mated with the women, the human women, and created this race of giants. So see, Satan has been trying to corrupt God's creation from the garden forward with a race of people that were corrupted in their DNA. They no longer had the DNA of their father, Obviously, the fall caused them to be born into sin, but actually corrupt their DNA with these fallen demon spirits mating with the women. That's evil. That's evil. God had to bring a flood and destroy the earth because of this, because all of mankind had pretty much been corrupted. The Bible says, the Lord saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become on the earth and that every inclination of the thoughts of the human heart were only evil. The Lord regretted that he had made human beings on the earth and his heart was deeply troubled. You know how that is. As parents, there's days you have a rough day and you go, doggone it, you know, you love your kids, but you're like, oh, I don't know, do I regret this decision or not? No. <laughs> but you really don't. You really don't regret it, Right? You love your kids. You do anything for them. You die for them. You lay your life down for them. But there's those days where you just go, ah, oh, right? This is what the Lord was saying. He, did, he loves you, okay? He doesn't regret that he made you, but this was evil. It says, I will wipe from the face of the earth the human race I have created, and with them the animals, the birds, and the creatures that move along the ground, for I regret that I've made them. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. I'm here to tell you, you have favor in the eyes of the Lord. Amen? And you are the ones that God will preserve, protect, 
put in his ark of safety and keep you no matter what the evil is going on in the world, whatever situation's happening. Satan wants to destroy human life, be sure. But God, but God, amen? But God, if God be for us, who can be against us, right? If we don't bow, we won't burn, amen? If we don't give in to their lies and join their lies and join their team, we stand with God, we stand for Him. And the Bible says if we stand for Him, He is certainly going to stand for us, amen? Satan wants to destroy human life, whether the unborn baby or your identity in God. He lies about God. He'll tell you lies about you, who you are, what you can do. He fears if you truly know, especially young people really listen to me, if you truly know who you are and how powerful you are and what you can do. He fears what you'll accomplish. He fears that you'll stop him from being able to destroy lives. Why do you think they want to tell you you were not born a boy or born a girl? Why do you think they want to try to get you to go get surgeries? Do you know we even have, have hospitals, six of them here in Ohio and all across the nation. There are hospitals that if kids go in that are uh, suicidal or they're struggling with themselves or they feel depressed or they feel discouraged, they put them on medications and then they tell them, you're trapped in the wrong body. You shouldn't be in this body. You should be in a different body. Satan is targeting kids and youth because he hates God's seed. He hates the righteousness of God, just like he targeted the women of old, and they, uh, the Nephilim rela uh, had relations with them. So children today are not just being exposed to gender fluidity and encouraged to experiment with drugs at media and schools and hospitals are trying to give them a full-blown LGBTQ environment to train them up from the time they're little kids to tell them them that you might not be a boy, you might not be a girl. Here's one of the tools they use. This is called the gender bread person. This is all in the book. They have another one called the gender unicorn. See how they use little innocent things like a gingerbread man. You and I grew up with the gingerbread man in the story, right? I, I admit it ended kind of rough, but either way, you know, <laughs> the gingerbread man in the oven, remember? Anyhow, but this ends much, much rougher, Amen. This sterilizes kids. This breaks kids' hearts. Do you remember how confused you were when you were a little kid? I was confused just trying to figure out where the bathroom was at school and when we were supposed to go to this classroom and that break and that lunch thing and this thing and that. Can you imagine confusing kids about whether they're a boy or a girl? That should make us so infuriated. It should make us so at mad. So what they tell them is the identity that you were born with was just something the doctor told you or someone told you, but your expression in your head and your thoughts and your attractions and all this thing, and they use this little did this ugly demonic thing to show these kids. And it sounds exciting and fun that you get to pick, like picking colors out of your Crayola box. But instead of picking colors out of your box to color your picture, you're picking your identity. You're picking your, whether you're a boy or a girl, this is a lie from hell. Do you agree? This is a lie from hell. Anybody has common sense. Like my husband says, you can pick up a kitten and flip it over and tell if it's a boy or a girl. God made them male and female, every species, amen? <clears throat> Children naturally look to adults to teach them the way to live. Children are innocent. They don't have the reasoning skills to know that Satan is doing this to them. It's up to us to expose this. We have to help them. We have to expose abusive behavior. Children are trusting, they're loving. It's horrific, it's beyond horrific that kids are being abused in this way. And there's stars like JoJo and Hannah Montana. And have you noticed what the Hollywood celebrity culture does? They get you hooked on something and then they introduce all of this trash in it. Sierra was just telling me she went to see Dr. Strangelove, I think it was called. She said, they're just cramming this stuff down your throat. And most of the audience there, she said, are teenagers. We need to say no, no more. No to Hollywood when they do those things. I love a good movie just like you do. But if that movie's driving and pushing agendas to destroy your life and your friends' lives, do you want to put your money behind that? Do you want to support that? No, we need to stand up and say no more. And thank God there are alternatives coming forth, right? There are lots of good things that are coming out. All of you, you go be movie producers. You go become the one that brings the answer. You go do something cool and amazing. 
that will change the whole thing and stop giving them our money, right? Let's stop supporting what they're doing and raise up our own things. We need to raise up our own. We do this as a church and all the other churches and leaders, I encourage you to do the same. So they, what they do is they start with these stars, they get your kids following them, and about the time they get to the age, then they do some crazy thing and come out, right? And now these girls, the girls are being targeted, by the way. Girls are the ones they're targeting. Girls that are already struggling with their identity. I struggle with my identity in the sense that I didn't feel like I was pretty. I didn't feel like I was, you know, lovable. I didn't like myself. I had zits or I had whatever going on. How many of you older people would say to the young people, all of us felt that way, right? I don't care how pretty you thought you were how, or you thought the girl in school was. She didn't think she was pretty. So she bullied people or he bullied people just to act like they were tough and cool. But on the inside, they didn't feel pretty or handsome either. And so I just want to tell you, no immoral, no impure, no immoral, no greedy person, no idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. And so we don't want anyone to deceive us with empty words. We don't want to worship ourselves, our bodies. I struggle with my identity as a person, but now kids are struggling to know if they're a male or a female. What, what a crazy thing is that? And they're told there is no God. No wonder suicide is the second cause of death among young people. They're taking their lives. And a lot of them are overdosing on drugs. And I'd say if you put those two together, it becomes number one. You know, if you look at drugs and you look at kids doing drugs, many times that's just seeing how close to the edge you can get to take your life because you don't, you hate yourself. If you've ever struggled with self-hatred, and I believe Tom was ministering to, about that, I struggle with that. I think everybody struggles at some point with hating themselves because Satan is accuser. He's accusing us. He's the accuser of the brother. He's always pointing a finger, telling you how you don't measure up, and you sinned, and you messed up. That's why it's so important. When you mess up, run to God. Just run to Jesus. Amen? Run to God. Anyway, we need to close here, but I just want you to know, the Bible says we're not to be ignorant of Satan's lies, that Satan not outwit us. We are not ignorant of his schemes. How do we recognize truth from lies? The Bible says the person without the Spirit does not receive what comes from God's Spirit because it is foolishness to him. He's not able to understand it for it is evaluated spiritually. The enemy's trying to divide all of us. He's trying to get men against women, different ethnicities against it, different ethnicities. He's trying to stir strife. He wants to teach uh, in schools critical race theory and make us think that we should hate somebody if their skin tone is different. Let me just say, Jesus is the great equalizer. Our skin tone has nothing to do with our heart, right? Has nothing to do. We're either born into the kingdom of God, we're in his kingdom, or we're in the kingdom of Satan. That's it. That's the two races, amen? And the rest of it is just skin tone. It's just God saying, I'm going to color this one a little darker, color this one a little lighter, a little this, a little that. It's just God's beautiful, unique design to make us all one beautiful array of Him and His expression of love. Amen? So do not let them divide us. Do not let them come against us. And while they're trying to divide us, they're out there stealing our kids, right? They're indoctrinating our kids. So these hospitals... They bring those kids in and they say, you may be a boy or girl, you're in the wrong body, that's why you're unhappy. And they send them over to the trans clinic. Now these clinics have beautiful flowery names and they only allow transgender people to work in them. So your child gets no other picture. They bring those children in there and they begin to bind them and I won't even go into the details, it's too horrific. I've had nurses talk to me about it. It's horrific. And this is happening under parents' watch. And you know what they say to the parent? They say, a transgender child is better than a dead child. As if that's the only options out there. That's it. So then parents think, well, I don't want my child to commit suicide. I better let them do this. No, 40% of kids who transition kill themselves. 40%, no one's talking about that, right? And if you put anything on social media, there's even people that have gone back from, they transition, they regret it, and they try to go back, which many of them are already sterilized, and there's things they can never fix. They'll never be able to have children. They're not talking about that. But when they try to go back and put their story on social media, guess what? It gets censored. It gets removed. They only want you to hear the narrative they want you to hear, and they're controlling the narrative. They control what you get when you do searches. They know, they have pop up. You won't get any conservative news if you try to just search Google. 
You won't get it. Why? Because they're part of that organization. So from a biblical worldview, God created the earth for man and woman. He set commandments in place, principles to govern our life under his leadership. But in a globalist view, the earth is to be worshiped over the people that God created. And that's their agenda. They have traded God's truth for a lie and worshiped and served the creation instead of the creator. That's what Romans says. So, you know, media is censoring us when the powers that are there can determine what you can see and not see. That's how they brainwash you. When celebrities get up and try to push that, when movies push that, there's a whole chapter on propaganda and brainwashing, but I don't have time to go into that. But they use media and people in media and celebrities to drive the agendas. That's how they get popular. Have you ever seen a video where the star says, I sold my soul to the devil? They really mean it. They really mean it. They were given a choice. Be popular and do this. Or if you don't, you know, if you don't sing about this or say this is cool or push kids toward uh, certain things, toward transitioning, then you're not going to be popular. Anyway, the Bible says, and Jesus said, when children are fully trained or when a student is trained, they'll become like their teacher. Who brings kids to faith? Parents in surveys. 50% of the time, it's a parent. 29% of the time, it's children's ministry, and 26%, it's a, it's a friend of a child. So you as friends can invite people to come to church. You can invite them to the Lord. So many parents are not taking care of their kids today. Do you know that 78% of kids are not growing up in a nuclear family? Mom and dad, that's what nuclear means. Did you know it was on their site that Black Lives Matter said we are against the nuclear family? Did you know that? And cisgender privilege. Do you know what cisgender privilege is? They're against it. It's where you have a mom and a dad raising kids. That's bad. That's evil. I love the black community. I love all people. I love what God does in our lives when he brings us together, the joy of the differences and the spice of life, all of us coming together. I love that, but I hate anything that would destroy God's family and his plan for family. That's against God's word. It's against God's plan. We need to be wise what we're doing what we're standing behind, what we're supporting, amen? Amen, we gotta to come together and work together for this time. When fully trained, the student becomes like their teacher. You don't want these people training your kids. You don't want them teaching your kids. How many, how much in the news has been exposed recently of all these teachers who have done evil things to kids, hurt kids, been abusing them? I, as a youth leader, had the same thing happen. I had a youth come to me when he was 16 and tell me he was struggling with homosexual addiction. And I said, uh, and he said, the school told him he needed to experiment or he'd have regret. And I said, no, 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 you'll have, you'll have regret if you do experiment. So he came to church a little while and then he disappeared. We tried to reach out, we didn't see him. He came back to me when he was almost 19 years old. And he said, I don't know what happened, but I feel like God let me down. And I said, no, God is here for you. He loves you. He'll help you, but you got to meet him there. You know, you got to say no to what the devil says and stay plugged in. And then he went on to tell me it was a teacher who actually introduced him to it and who violated him and several other young people. Absolutely. This is what's happening. This is what's happening. Parents don't know. Do you know that 78% of American youth are not raised by two parents anymore? Now, I'm not, if you're a single parent, my heart is for you. The church is here to stand with you and help you, right? I'm not condemning you. Somebody made a bad decision and did something stupid and left you, or even you made a mistake somewhere in history. There's no condemnation in Christ Jesus. But we got to regain the family, amen? We got to go back and say it is the nuclear family. God made a husband and a wife, and he said to be fruitful and multiply. Satan wants to stop kids from multiplying when they become married and having a good future through transgender, through trans surgeries, through all this stuff. The worst part of that whole thing with the hospital, I mean, it's all horrific, right? But they bring a clergy member in to help transition the youth to their new identity, and they say, pick your pronoun and your new name, and they bless them into this rite of passage into a new identity. That is a mockery. That is heresy against the born-again experience. And Satan, you are a liar. And all of those that are part of these schemes, you will be judged with them if you do not repent. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We know just how serious this is. This is a child's life. This is a child, an innocent child, being taken advantage of by adults who should know better. Hmm? Parents, don't you give your God-given call to raise up kids to anybody else. And we knew something was really wrong when some parents got upset at a board meeting and started saying, no, you're not teaching our kids CRT. And no, you're not telling them that they may not be a girl or a boy and transitioning them and all that. When they called the FBI in, our government called the FBI in and called these parents terrorists. My goodness, you wanna see some terror? <laughs> you mess with my kids, right? That's what you better say. You mess with my kids. So I love that Robin was bold and courageous. Sadly, I had somebody say, I don't think the Lord would be so strong that way. And I'm thinking, you don't care. You're more bothered about his strong words than you are about what they said about Jesus Christ. I don't know if you know him. If you say you're a believer and you are upset with Robin, but you're not upset with these people that are calling Jesus, these these are blasphemies. Do you know the Bible says in the last days there'll be an antichrist and a false prophet that'll be in alignment to Satan and that that prophet will speak blasphemies? I don't know if this is him or not, but he sure looks like it. Anyway, we got to close. These words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. Deuteronomy 6.6, 6. when is that? That's like every time of your day. When you're walking, when you're sitting, when you're laying, when you're rising. How do you do that if you're never around your kids? How do you do that when your kids are on devices all day long? How do you do that? Can I just talk to you, young people? Make sure you read your Bible. Watch who your friends are. You can minister to anybody, but you can't be friends with just anybody. You will go where your friends go. You'll do what they do. So you can go and you can say, hey, you need to come to church. Come to youth group. God loves you. Jesus loves you. You can witness to them. But if you're best buds with them, you're going to go where they go. And it's a whole lot easier to pull someone down than it is to pull them up. Right? They have choices to make. I know you care. I care deeply. I've laid my life down. I was youth leader here for nine years. I didn't know how to be a youth leader. Pastor Gary said, Drenna, would you do the youth? And I said, I'm just a mother. I don't know what to do. He said, just do for them what you do for our kids. Just do that. And you know what? I did. I took that charge seriously. For nine years, I poured my life out. And I appreciate Pastor Alicia. She does the same thing. She has a mother's heart for these kids. <laughs> Praise God. I know what it's like to spend your anniversary, and I know you do too. I know what it's like to spend your anniversary at youth camp by yourself, or my husband come and you know, drive in there and come in for the evening meeting. But I saw the power of God poured out on those kids. I saw the anointing change their life. And I'm telling you, God is still doing what he's always done, changing, transforming lives, setting people free, giving them a destiny, giving them a hope, a future, just like he's done for all of you. And so there are a lot of young people out there who do not have parents who are engaged in their life. They don't know what's going on. Some of them don't even care, sadly. In China, only 3% of the kids are not raised by two parents. 3% in China, but here, look at what we have. 78% of kids don't have parents. We gotta go back to the Bible. We gotta go back to moms and dads sticking it out, loving God, loving each other, and staying with it for their kids too, amen? But not just in religion, in love, in life, and doing things before God. The enemy knows how to corrupt innocence, and parents have to be on guard. And I'm telling you this, the lukewarm gospel of come as you are and leave as you came will not help people. It will not transform them. We should all, we should invite people to come as they are, but we invite them to come and receive Jesus and be changed, amen? That's God's plan. There's so many churches that have compromised, it's ridiculous. I must confess, I turned a table over. I think it was Jesus. I think it was his anointing. I asked Jesus later, I said, Jesus, did you premeditate turning over that table? I don't think so. I think you were just so... Uh, you just saw that indignation. You, you hadn't felt that they were turning your house into a den of thieves and money changers. 
I was walking in a town I won't name that's not far away, and there was a big pride flag hanging in front of their church and the one across the street, and they had this big sign, we believe in equity, we believe in love is love and equality and blah, 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 blah. And it got to the end of the list, and there was no, we believe in the Bible, we believe in Jesus, we believe in God. And it just rose up on the inside of me, and I just yelled. I mean, I didn't plan it. I just yelled. I said, you believe in everything else except Jesus Christ, the gospel that saves people in the Bible. You're going to go to hell. <laughs> so, I didn't put that last line in the book, but I said that. Anyway, I didn't know anybody was there. I saw a little sheepish head, sheepish head look out, look at me. The next time I came by there, they put something on the bottom about God. The next time I came by there, they removed that. And earth, the planet, planet, save the earth. No, I say let's save the children. God created the earth. Everything we need is here. Everything we need is here. It's just somebody wants to control it. Somebody wants the gold in their pocket, the diamonds in their pocket, the land in their UNESCO. They want to control all the beautiful places of the earth, and they want to take it from you. But God, but God, amen? Amen. I would encourage you, be careful how you live, not as unwise, but as wise. Make the most of every opportunity. The days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Don't get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Don't you be one of those Christians that's sitting around home going, I'm not going to church. I don't get anything out of it, drinking your glass of wine and thinking that you're all there and you're going to go to heaven with Jesus. That's a little lukewarm if you ask me. I'm not your judge, but Jesus says we are to be about our Father's business. We are to be going and praying. We are to pray in this hour. So it's a time to pray. I want to give you this final word. This is a prophecy. Listen to this. This is from Kenneth Hagin. This was given back in 2020. No, I'm sorry, it was 1980, sorry. And it was updated 2020. They put it out. The end of the age is coming upon this generation. The powers of darkness, the forces of evil are rampant as never before. And they will be increased in intensity and velocity. And even many Christians will see and look upon these things and say, oh, there's no use. Throw up their hands in futility and say, well, I guess it's all over. We'll just have to hold on and pray for Jesus to come shortly because the devil's about to take over everything. But thus saith the Lord, in this day, I am searching the body of Christ to enlist soldiers. I'll raise up a new band. I'll raise up a new army who will know how to pray against the powers of darkness. And the light will dispel the darkness. And the truth will set men, set men free. And prayer will break the bonds that bind men's minds and spirits and bodies. Hallelujah. Yes, there are those who will learn to take their place hurriedly. Hurriedly. It must be hurriedly. It must be quickly. It must be quickly that they learn, that they enter in quickly to stand against the forces of darkness and evil that will try and come against the land, against the church, against the home, that would try and disrupt and destroy all that is good and all that God has endorsed. But the hand of the Lord is upon those who will listen and at the urge of God in the Spirit to those who are attentive, they will pray. The Spirit of God will help you to pray. Do not try to do it yourself. Though there must be labor on your part, yet at the same time rest in Him. Let the Spirit flow through you like a river, like a mighty wave. Let it flow through you. Give vent to those innermost groanings. Let them escape your lips. Take the time to get alone and wait. Sometimes not even saying anything, but on the inside of you, there's an agonizing. There is a flowing out of your spirit by the Holy Spirit to the great spirit, the father of spirits. And thou shalt be sustained. Thou shalt be kept. And thy family and thy home will be sure and stand fast. And thy children shall grow up strong and stalwart in the Lord, and they shall have no fear. No fear. Amen. Amen.
Thank you, Jesus. 